Okay, so there's been a lot of chatter recently about how AI is coming to take all of our jobs. Well, it's true, so good luck out there, man. No wait, I wasn't finished. I was gonna say that I think there could be something like 5% of the population that might be immune to AI-induced job loss, and the reason is something called the metacognitive threshold. You probably wanna know about this, so can we turn the lights back on, please? Man, why is it so hard to land a hook on YouTube these days? Anyway, the billion dollar startup that I co-founded has one of the largest enterprise AI deployments with real world usage. Last year, we even contributed about percent of OpenAI's entire enterprise revenue share. And yeah, unfortunately I have to blur that number because you know, trade secrets, but we both know our rightful place on the slide, Sam. So after seeing up close how thousands of people interact with AI, I noticed a pattern I wanted to share with you or more specifically, a threshold of sorts. And the careers of those above and below it could vary dramatically in the coming years. Hello, fellow founders. Welcome to Startup Gospel, where there's always good news for your startup. Maybe your soul too. But this is a startup-themed episode, which means I am here and only here to transmit to you a lattice of mental models that will change how you see the world and make success inevitable. Today, we're gonna to talk about the metacognitive threshold, or MCT for short in my opinion, quickly becoming the most important principle in modern commercial knowledge work. If you can understand this concept, there's not only a good chance you will have a really successful career, there's also a good chance you will never lose your job to AI, even as the R&D breakthroughs continue to march us down one by one, IQ point by IQ point. I found that the easiest way to explain the MCT is to describe it by reification. Like, imagine it's a real thing, and then we can talk about its properties. So let's posit that this bar is the metacognitive threshold, then the following would be true. At or above the MCT, a person has the ability to simulate or make conjectures about the mind of someone more intelligent, even if they can't operate at that speed or horsepower themselves. Furthermore, they also gain the ability to simulate down the spectrum, although I found this claim to generally be much more intuitive to people. Lastly, the higher above the MCT you are, the more range you can simulate in total, both up and down. I'll say that again because it's not an obvious idea. The higher above the MCT you are, the more range you can simulate in total, both up and down the spectrum. Contrast that with the more intuitive first approximation that anyone can always simulate up to a standard deviation above or below on the cognitive ability bell curve. The boldest claim that the MCT makes is that this is not true, hence the threshold concept. So to understand what it's like to look up the spectrum, if you've had the fortune to manage someone much smarter than you, or if you've been a better coach than player at something, then you actually have a pretty good idea of what this feels like. You understand how someone of superior ability can be doing things much faster than you or seeing new avenues of thought that you can't. And yet you can imagine what it must be like to be someone who can do those things even if you demonstrably can't do it yourself. Furthermore, the better at this you are, the more you are even able to hold expectations of that person appropriate to their own level of challenge, not yours. If everyone could do this, then everyone could be a good coach or tutor, which we know is not true. And if no one could do this, then there would be no coaches or tutors, which we also know is not true. So it's definitely a thing. To look down the spectrum is to easily contain another person's mental ability and processes in your head. If you're familiar with virtual machines, which lets a computer simulate another computer within itself, then this would be the cognitive equivalent of that. Below the MCT, a person becomes less likely to recognize higher intelligence, and in particular, I've noticed that when they interact with people who are a lot smarter than they are, they will often label those people as weird and not think too much about it. If pressed and told that, no, this person actually is super smart, but you're just not seeing it, because there's no simulation capability below the MCT, we predict that they would not be able to hypothesize about how that person's brain or thought processes work, and their attempts at doing so would be obviously wrong or implausible to someone above the MCT. Fans of Paul Graham's essays might recognize this as a generalized version of the Blub Paradox. As PG originally explained it, the Blub Paradox refers to how programmers using a mid-tier language like Blub can easily see why less powerful languages, such as machine code for example, are inferior, but they can't appreciate why more powerful languages, such as Lisp or one of my personal favorites, Haskell, are superior. They just seem weird or unnecessary from Blub's perspective. This happens because their thinking is shaped by Blub, blinding them to higher levels of abstraction and expressiveness. Only those familiar with the most powerful languages can see the full spectrum of differences. My own amendment to this concept is that Blub developers are also distinguished by the fact that they don't stop to ask, why would such a weird language exist in the first place and have a following? 
And there's like a teleological dead end in their thinking, meaning they don't investigate or even feel the need to investigate why a certain tool came into existence in the first place. So it is also to some extent a trait openness or curiosity bottleneck. It's worth emphasizing again that it's not the inherent lack of cognitive ability per se, but the lack of awareness around it. That's what the meta is for. It's not the cognitive threshold in the sense of, are you smart enough? Newsflash, none of us will be smart enough pretty soon. It's the metacognitive that carries the weight in the sense that you have cognition ability about your own and others' cognition. Now there's an important disclaimer I have to make because I know this audience is obviously above the MCT, obviously, and already thinking about this critically. But wait, if you're such a critical thinker, then why haven't you hit like and subscribe yet? I'm simulating your thought processes right now as we speak and don't like what I'm seeing, man. Is the MCT really a hard line, like a binary threshold that you cross, or is it more of a gradient? Honestly, it's probably a gradient, but from what I've seen, it's a super steep one clustered around a narrow band, so it feels like a threshold in practice. I wish I had more insight into why the MCT exists or what brain magic makes it happen because I think that would offer some clues as to how to activate it in more people. My best guess, it's somehow tied to the differences in the prefrontal cortex, the part of your brain that's handling all the executive thinking, but even that's just a hunch. And as for where the threshold triggers, well, in my experience, the hardware becomes available somewhere around the second standard deviation of cognitive ability, but it activates very reliably between the second and third standard deviations, and almost for sure beyond that, assuming you're past your mid-20s already. That would mean that about 5% of the population has the potential to be above the MCT, hence the title of this video. Here's the biggest practical takeaway of the MCT concept. It actually doesn't matter how smart someone is, only that they are at or above the MCT. Why? Because in the team sport known as commercial knowledge work, an above MCT player will be able to accurately observe other players' intellectual abilities, correctly infer their own relative ability, and be self-aware about where their comparative advantages lie. Now, can you activate someone and push them above the MCT? Yes, I think so, but it's in the way that you're activating existing hardware by giving them some kind of bootloader for a more advanced operating system. In this sense, it's kind of like they shipped with sufficient hardware to run above the MCT, which you know you can thank your parents, but they just need some kind of serendipitous firmware update that maybe you or a manager or a mentor pushes to them. In my experience, I've had success calling attention to the MCT as a concept and prompting someone during an intensive training phase with questions like, why do you think so-and-so believes that? Or, can you come up with the most charitable version of the internal thought process that led to that conclusion? Then with a bit of luck, they activate and suddenly can boot a more metacognitively enabled operating system and receive arbitrary software updates. It's super cool to see when the switch flips. A lot of the folks I've worked with hit an S-curve of intellectual growth right around this time. Once they're above the MCT and have internalized the new state, they become voracious explorers of new mental software, even if they happen to have more limited hardware. And that is super productive for all involved. So what does it look like when people at various points across the MCT interact? Well, unless your company is exceptional at hiring or all your functions are just loaded with mental seven-footers, you probably see this every day in completely routine interactions. Let's say you work at a biotech startup that's synthesizing cool molecules. Perhaps Alice can intuitively visualize and rotate complex 3D molecular structures in her mind at lightning speed, spotting symmetries and interactions effortlessly, while Bob can do the same, but much more slowly, like piecing it together step by step over minutes. He might even be using pen and paper to support a lot of his working memory. When Bob and Alice are talking with each other, they'll be giving cursor movements to each other, like sharing updates on their internal mental state and visualizations. And honestly, it's probably Alice who's leading a lot of this conversation while Bob is mostly just following and confirming. But add a third person, Charlie, who's below the MCT, and Charlie might not even recognize that Alice and Bob are mentally modeling these structures during the conversation. Charlie would just hear the words without grasping the underlying cognitive process, and because he's below the MCT, he either can't or doesn't make an effort to simulate Alice and Bob's mental states. Charlie might be slightly baffled at the flow of cursor updates being passed around and at some point start asking questions that seem out of context or non sequitur to Alice and Bob. And even if you explain this phenomenon to Charlie by reviewing the game tape by pointing out when exactly he's doing this, he would probably become frustrated and project his anger onto you because he can't simulate or adopt any of what you're saying for himself anyway. And that's due to lacking the metacognitive hardware or firmware to engage with it. <laughs> what do you mean this is a very specific example? No, it's not. I would have never done this a long time ago to someone and that would have never been their reaction. God. Pro tip, never do this to anyone. The worst part of all this is that Charlie might not even recognize that Alice is much smarter than Bob and Charlie might even declare Bob to be the smarter one if pressed. 
simply because from Charlie's perspective, Bob is actually relatable and Alice is just kind of weird. And yes, there is a lot more to be said and discovered about the MCT, and for sure some of it is controversial and outside the current Overton window, but I predict this topic will be trending in two to three years as everyone is forced to grapple with it. So please don't shoot the messenger. I'm just saying what I've been seeing from the front lines. Okay, so to bring this back to the reason you clicked into this video in the first place, my claim is basically that only those at or above the MCT can effectively stay above the API. If you haven't heard of the expression of staying above the API before, it's basically a metaphor from software development. In programming, an application programming interface is an abstraction layer that lets you use a service without worrying about its underlying implementation, which can be swapped or improved without affecting you. In the AI era, foundation models are essentially intelligence as a service, an API for cognitive tasks. Staying above the API means positioning yourself as a user, orchestrator, or designer of these AI systems, rather than being the replaceable code below the API that AI can and will automate away. As AI capabilities rise, meaning the API level goes up, those below get commoditized, but those above will leverage it strategically, staying irreplaceable by understanding and directing the intelligence at a higher level, just as talented managers and coaches have been doing all along. If we look ahead, I predict that pushing the whole population onto knowledge work will be seen as just a temporary blip in human history, kind of like how farming or factory jobs used to employ everyone, but now they're kind of niche after the initial wave of development. Lastly, I'm not sure what kind of economy comes next after the knowledge work economy, maybe the self-actualization economy, but in hindsight, commercial knowledge work might end up being a single digits percentage of humanity type of thing, just like farming is today compared to a couple of centuries ago. Okay, so this was the last step on our way to the talent gradient, which I promise is worth the buildup, even if you're not in the scale up phase right now, which I get it for these types of videos is like 100 people in the world at any given time. So check out some of the other videos on talent I've been putting together as we march towards the finale. The talent gradient is the best mental model I have for what happens when talent meets economic forces, and I promise it applies to you as well. As always, when you find the success you've been looking for, just remember to render unto Caesar what is Caesar's, and unto God what is God's. All right, catch you in the next one.